Nicole, college football, it is just around the corner. So today we are taking you to the ACC, specifically down in North Carolina, where we're joined by North Carolina head coach Mac Brown. Coach, how's it going? Brooke, it's going really well. We're uh, obviously guys practice like the Olympians now. They work every day. They work so hard and they prepare so much. And all of us are anxious and excited as fans and coaches and players as, as the season approaches. Uh, but th this is kind of that, uh, we're, we're close enough to be excited, but still got 48 days to go. So till, till the opening game, but we start practice, we report August 1st, start practice August 2nd. So it'll be here before we know it. No, that's exactly right. And listen, there's a lot of buzz surrounding your team, as specifically who's going to be under center, and that's Drake May. You know, he um, has been getting a lot of attention, rightfully so there. But as his head coach, how do you manage or how do you handle a player like that when they're on the national stage? Brooke, we're lucky enough at Texas, we had someone up for the Heisman about every year. So John Bianco did a tremendous job of, of making sure that they were grounded understanding that your team needs to win before you end up getting awards at the end of the year. And Jeremy Sharp, who's our director of communications, worked closely with John with all those Texas guys. So we feel like that we've, we've got a really good feel of, of uh, how to market the guys, uh, how much they can handle, because if you're not careful, you have them doing too much and you just, you just wear them out. And, and it's all about winning. They, they've got to play well and they've got to win to end up being uh, in the position they want to at the end of the year. Coach, you have been coaching in this sport, your association with this sport going on 50 years. You came back to coach after being on our side of the business. What keeps you going? What keeps you coming back to college football? Yeah, uh, Nicole, they said I went to the dark side now. That's what all the coaches tell me when they start talking about you were with the media for three <laughs> for five years. Oh, my gosh. We're not so um, bad. <laughs> no. Uh, Nicole, we all have a purpose. And um, uh, during the, uh, the the time where they were talking about the, the Hall of Fame, you have a year that, that you go back and say thank you to all the people that you need to. And I came back to North Carolina and I was talking to the – ex-players and about 200 of them showed up for a party and um, I had a great time and, and we had a lot of laughter and talking about stories and some of them were true and some of them weren't of course these guys ex exaggerate uh, but uh, we were walking out and Sally said you know that I haven't seen you this happy in five years this is what you do your gift is players and uh, at this age well, we're sitting here where uh, I have a chance to change young guys lives and and that's a blessing and not many people get to do that, and I get to do it every day. And uh, so I get up with an edge every day, trying to see if I can help change somebody's life for the positive, and, and that's what keeps me in coaching right now. And one of the things that's going to keep you going this year is a chase, again, to return to the ACC championship games, but it's the first year without divisions in the ACC. What kind of challenge does that present for you this season? Well, Nicole, I like divisions. Uh, we had it at the Big 12, and then we didn't. Um, and, and when you don't have divisions, it's, it's usually because they want better games for TV, and I've got that because everybody's trying to figure out how much money they can make in the TV market right now, and, uh, and you need to get better games to do that. Uh, but also, you, you lose some rivalries. Uh, you, you start playing different teams that maybe you're not as used to playing, and you're your fan base isn't as used to. You do get to go to different places. But I don't think the pressure changes because you've still got to be one of the two best teams in the league. And, and that's pretty much the way it was anyway. Coach, let's take a look at your schedule here. And you've got a demanding first three weeks of non-conference play. You're taking on South Carolina, followed by App State, and then Minnesota there. So how do you think realignment will impact non-conference scheduling here in the future? Brooke, uh, everything's based on money right now. We talk about NIL, we're, we're, we're talking about realignment. It's, it's all about money. How many dollars can you make? And, and that's driven by TV. So uh, to me, we're going to see the, the conferences after they realign probably playing a lot more interconference games. And then the out-of-conference games, you'll probably see less games with an FCS team because TV is going to demand that you, you play a national game uh, when, when you're outside of conference. 
So I think you're going to see nine, 10 conference games and then probably two national games just so uh, you, you'll be more marketable uh, for your TV games. And, and I think that's coming pretty soon. One of the positives of realignment, if there are any, is that we are returning some rivalry games. And one of those is a game that you coach in many times, Texas and Texas A&M. I said it in the right order, by the way. I hope you appreciate <laughs> that. Um, I was just wondering, you know, what was a memory that sticks out for you in that rivalry now that it's coming back because they'll be in the SEC together? Nicole, you're so right. I've coached at OU, and when I got to Texas, the first thing I said was the OU-Texas game, and they said, no, it's the Texas OU game. You need to understand. So it's, a, it's the same thing with the Texas-Texas A&M rivalry. I actually spoke to the uh, high school coaches convention yesterday in Houston, and it was great to reconnect with so many of the high school coaches that I just love in the, in the state of Texas, and they were so good to me for my 16 years there. And they asked me that question. They said, what, what's the biggest memory? And I, I, forgive me, but I, I actually had three. Uh, one of them was Ricky Williams uh, breaking Tony Dorsett's all-time rushing record. And, and he did it on a 77-yard run. And he needed 63 yards to break the record. And I said, they've got a great defense. You may not make 63 yards. He said, no, I'm going to make more than 63, but I'm going to break the record on a long run that'll be a top 10 uh, highlights uh, for, for TV, and uh, and it'll put me in the Heisman. And and he did all of that with a 77-yard run. He kind of patted me on the tail at the end, said, I, I got my 63 yards. I said, yeah, you got it. <laughs> uh, so that was one. Uh, an, another one was the uh, uh, we, we played at A&M, and Cedric Benson had like 394 yards rushing, I think, and we threw eight passes and completed seven of them. And it was just a dominating game, so I – I remember that one because they were always a physical team and it was good for us to have such a physical presence. And the last one, Nicole, has to be the, the last second kick with, with three seconds left by Justin Tucker that won the last game in the series at A&M. And, and that was the last time the game has been played. So it'll be fun to, to watch the renewal of the game. All right, Coach. Well, we know how busy you are getting your team ready for this season here in the fall. We appreciate you taking the time, and hopefully we can catch up with you, catch up with you soon. Well, thank you, ladies, and thanks for having me on, and, and let's have a great fall.